Hey, welcome to the Great Cast. It is Greg, and this week uh, in our uh, cycle of readings, one of my absolute all-time favorite gospel uh, stories, scenes, witnesses, accounts, whatever you want to call it, it is uh, it's awesome. Okay, it's that one where uh, the guy, the paralyzed guy, the paralytic, uh, all of his buddies like bring him in on a stretcher. And uh, my my uh, my understanding and my visual from this reading comes from uh, that great Zeffirelli movie, Jesus of Nazareth. Uh, I saw it first when I was a kid. I watched it on that. Uh, it's like one of the first TV miniseries I saw. You know, you watch it every night at like six o'clock or seven o'clock. And because it's a Jesus movie, my parents let me stay up late. <laughs> it was awesome. It's like went on forever. If you've ever seen the movie, it's like 20 hours long. Anyway, so this is the part um, that and this is kind of how I remember it because of the movie. So the guys are like. Uh, They've all gone over to Peter's house. Now, Peter, of course, remember, it's, it's the beginning of his ministry. So he's kind of already said, well, okay, I'll go fish for people. That sounds awesome. And uh, and so he, he, and Jesus is like, awesome, thanks. We're going to use your house because I have a lot of people I want to invite over. It's like, what? You can't do that. Anyway, so the crowd all swarms to Peter's house. And so he's kind of like, you know, like in those those movies that you're not supposed to see when the parents leave town and then the kids invite all their friends over to the party and then all of a sudden uh, there's too many people there and too much crazy stuff is going on and things get broken and the kid's like, oh no, my mom's going to kill me. Well, anyway, that's what this is. Uh, so Peter's like, my wife's going to kill me. And all these people are over his house and Jesus is just simply going to talk. So he gives this really great speech and everybody's crowded into the house. And in the movie, he gives the great speech. Um, it's like, uh... When the when the winds come from the north, it gets cold. And, and from the winds come from the south, it gets warm. And so if you understand the signs of the weather, how can you not understand the signs of the times? Isn't that great? So he's just given that really cool speech. And all of a sudden, there's this ruckus going on. And these people are like lowering this guy on a stretcher. Um, they're, they're, they're lowering it in the roof. Like they like break through Peter's like little grass hut roof uh, thing. And now in the movie, of course, the house has no roof. It's kind of interesting. Anyway, so uh, so the, the 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 guy in the stretcher comes right through the roof, and he's kind of strapped to the stretcher because he's paralytic, right? So he's like all kind of contorted, and he's he's strapped to the stretcher, and he's saying like, "I'm paralytic. I can't move. It's because my father sinned, and now I'm paralyzed." And uh, and so anyway, so everybody's like, "Ooh, ah, paralytic! Get him out of here!" And then Peter's like, "Oh my God! There's a hole in the roof!" Anyway, Jesus walks up to him and says, <clears throat> "Your sins are forgiven." And everybody's like, "Whoa! You can't say that." He says, "Why is that a problem?" Jesus says, "I mean, which is easier uh, to say that this man's sins are forgiven or to have him rise up and walk home?" Hmm. Everybody kind of like. And so then in, in the movie, the music starts. And he says, he says, so that you may believe the Son of Man has come. He looks at the paralytic, rise and walk. And so he, he gets up and, and he, he's kind of like, he's all kind of paralyzed looking and he kind of unfolds from the stretcher and he gets up and he's like, whoa, I can walk. And everybody's like, ooh, oh. And one guy is kind of like still going, that's blasphemy. You can't do that on a Sabbath. <laughs> he made the guy walk and he's like, you can't do that. I broke the rules. Anyway, that pretty much sums up the gospel. Now, what does it all mean? Well, here's the deal. Which is easier, to say that someone's sins are forgiven or to have them rise up and walk home? Or in this case, maybe you're not paralyzed and I'm not paralyzed, but uh, so to us, how does it apply? Well, it applies like this. Get out of your frozen state. Get out of your little trapped part of your mind that says everything has to be this way. Which is easier for God to say that your sins are forgiven or to have you actually wake up and do something with your life? You know, just kind of get out of this rut. We're going into Lent. This is the last Sunday before Lent begins. Ash Wednesday is coming. And to you non-Catholics out there in the world, you wait to see the little sign. Next week I'll have a little uh, lash on my head, maybe, uh, and I'll show you what it looks like. Anyway, we walk through the uh, the town, and everybody goes, hmm, what's on your hand? And it's kind of a fun little joke. You go up to your Catholic friends and you say, hey, what's that on your head? And then they go, what? And, and it smudges. Anyway, I digress. So, uh, so yeah, next week is Ash Wednesday. It's the beginning of 40 days of preparation for Easter. So with that in mind, you're about to hear this week's gospel, which is easier, to have your sins forgiven or for you to wake up and do something. I'll tell you which is easier. I'm, God has forgiven you, but that doesn't mean you get one or the other. You actually get both. When God forgives you, you need to wake up. You need to do something with your life. You need to become unfrozen 
so that you can get out and change the world. Okay? Now, we've been in kind of like in church language, we've been in like mission time for the last couple of weeks uh, since the Christmas season ended. And so we're supposed to be kind of toying with this idea of how do we go out there and save the world. Well, now, uh, now we get a time to back up, work on ourselves. Hey, remember the analogy? When the oxygen, ma when you're in the plane and the little mask falls and you got a kid with you, um, you're supposed to like put the mask on yourself first and then deal with the kid. So anyway, so the point is, is that it's time to work on you. It's time to work on us. Let's just pull back for a little while and make things happen. Anyway, my cell phone's ringing. I got to go. Thanks for tuning in. See you later. Bye. Hey, it's Greg. Hi. Hey, it's my wife. Uh, honey, I'm doing a Greg cast. Say hi to everybody in the Greg cast world because I'm supposed to kind of like be signing off now. So say hi. Ah, hi to all the people in the Greg cast world. Anyway, thanks for tuning in. I got to talk to my wife now. Bye. Remember, rise up and do something with your life. Right, honey?